Hello everyone, welcome to Teacher Hanji's channel. For today's tutorial, our topic is about Midline Theorem. For our objectives, we will prove the Midline Theorem inductively and deductively. And we will also solve problems involving Midline Theorem. So what is a Midline Theorem? A Midline Theorem it states that the segments that joins the midpoint of the sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side and is one half of its measure. So take a look at this figure. So I have here triangle ABC. So first, let us identify where is the midpoint. So from our figure, D is the midpoint of segment A in which it divides AB into two equal Parts, meaning AB is congruent to BD. Same to the other side, E is the midpoint of BC, in which it divides BC into two equal parts, BE and EC, and they are congruent. Remember that B and D here are the midpoints of our triangle. And from our midline theorem, it, it mentions that the segment that joins the midpoint, when we say segment, it is the line here. And this line is what we call a midline. It says from the theorem as well that that midline should be parallel to the third side. So the third side of this figure is AC. And it says that the midline or the measure of our midline is one half the measure of the third side. So meaning the midline here is equal to one half of AC since the third side here is AC. So let us prove this midline theorem inductively and deductively. So let us start first with inductive proof. I encourage you to get one sheet of paper and draw a triangle. From that triangle, please draw a midline. So it means that we divide the sides into two congruent parts. So after drawing a triangle and a midline, please get a scissor and cut the midline. So I simply have here different colors to indicate which parts are being cut. Now, let us rotate the top part of our triangle and attach it to the remaining parts of the triangle like this one. Okay, if you notice, we already formed here a parallelogram. So let us name this parallelogram ABCE. And going back to our theorem, it says that the segments that joins the midpoint of the two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side. So it means that the midline should be parallel to the third side, in which the third side here is the side BC. So it means the midline, which is this one, should be parallel to this one. And since we already have here a parallelogram, it means that these two opposite sides are already parallel, which is true. Next, the measure of the midline is one half the measure of the third. Then, DC here should be twice the measure of our midline. So it means that we have here 1, 2, which is also through our observations. It is also applicable if you draw different kinds of triangle like isosceles, right, and escaline triangle. So if you cut the midline and rotate the top part of our triangle, you form different kinds of parallelogram. So that is how we prove midline theorem inductively. So let us now prove Midline theorem deductively using a two-column proof in which we have here the statements and the reasons. So again, given the triangle ABC, G is the midpoint of AB and E is the midpoint of BC. So let us prove that GE is parallel to AC as given to the statement of midline theorem. And we will also prove that GE is equal to one half of AC. So let us have our first statement. Let us extend GE through E to a point N so that GE is congruent to EM. So from here, we will extend array. 
So we have EN here. And it says the G is congruent to EN. So let us put a markings for that. So for our reason, we will use the auxiliary line in which this one is also called a helping line in which we will draw an extra line needed to complete a proof. So after this one, let us have our second statement. Let us draw segment NC. So we have this one. So for the reason, we will use auxiliary line or a helping line. So from here, let us name different angles that we can use in our proofing. So we have here angle 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now let us move on with our third statement. We have here G is the midpoint of segment AB. E is the midpoint of segment BC, which is the given. Let us now move on with statement number 4. So we have here segment EB is congruent to segment BC. So for our reason, it is the definition of a midpoint. But like what I've said a while ago, since we have here the midpoint E, then it divides the segment BC into two congruent or equal parts. Next, let us have statement number 5. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So we have here angle 1 and angle 2. So for our reason, it will be a vertical angle student. Let us move on with statement number 6. We can say now that triangle EGP is congruent to triangle ENC. So we have this one. Triangle EGP is congruent to triangle ENC for the reasons of SAS postulate. Since we have here side angle side as well as side angle side to the other triangle. And since we prove that the two triangles are congruent, then we can say that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. So we have this one, angle 3 and angle 4. For the reason of CPCPC or corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. When? So let us move on with our statement number 8. We have here AB is parallel to CN for the reason of AIP theorem or the alternate interior parallel theorem. For our statement number 9, we have here AG is congruent to GB. So we have here AG is congruent to GB. Again, the reason will be the definition of midpoint since G is the midpoint of A, B. Let us continue this proving to the other page. So we have here the 10th statement. So we say that GB is congruent to CN. So GB is congruent to CN. Since we use this markings to indicate that they are congruent, then let us use another markings for that. For the reason of CPCPC or corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Let us have our 11th statement. GA is congruent to CN. GA is congruent to CN. Since we know that GA is congruent to GB and GB is congruent to CN, then we can conclude that GA is also congruent to CN by transitive property. Next, number 12 statement, we have quadrilateral A, G, and C is a parallelogram. So we have here this quadrilateral A, G, and C. And this quadrilateral is already a parallelogram for the reason of if one pair of the opposite sides of quadrilateral are both congruent and parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Since we proved that quadrilateral A, G, and C is a parallelogram, then we can say now that G is parallel to A, C. For the reason of opposite sides of parallelogram are parallel. Now, we already proved that G is parallel to A, C. So it means that the midline G is parallel to the third side A, C. Now, let us prove that G is equal to one half of AC. Let us continue our proving using this two-column proof. Let us have statement number 14. GE is congruent to EN. For our reason, we have if segments are congruent, then they have the same 
measure as mentioned in statement number one they are congruent next statement number 15 gn is equal to ge plus en for the reason of definition of between next statement number 16 we have gn is equal to ge plus ge is equal to GE. So we have this statement using substitution and addition property. We do substitute GE from EN here since it states that GE and EN are congruent. And GE plus GE is equal to 2 GE by addition property. So let us move on with statement number 17. Segment GN is congruent to segment AC. Segment GN is is congruent to segment AC for the reason of in a parallelogram any two sides are congruent. Now let us have statement number 18. 2GE is equal to AC by substitution. If you notice in number 16 the statement, we says that GN is equal to 2GE. So it means that the segment GN here is also equal to 2GE as well. So for our last statement, let us now prove that GE is equal to 1 half AC by multiplication property. So from number 18, we simply multiply both sides by 1 half to isolate GE here. Therefore, we end up with this equation. So that is how we prove midline theorem deductively. Let us have some exercises. Please test yourself. Let us have number 1. Find the missing indicated length. Let us find CD here. So by observation, we can say that CD is the midline, while XZ is the third side of our triangle. So it means if we are looking for the measure of CD, we simply get the half of 16, and that is equal to 8. Therefore, the measure of CD is equal to 8. Let us have another one. Let us find the measure of IK. So we have here IK. So if you notice, this one is the third side of our triangle. And even is the midline of the triangle. And since we know that the measure of the midline is one half the measure of the third side, then it means that the third side is twice the measure of the midline. So 5 times 2 is equal to 10. And that is the measure of IK. So let us have another one. Let us find KJ. Let us find KJ. Since we know that we are looking for the measure of the midline, and given the third angle, let us get the half of 18. 18 divided by 2 is equal to 9. And that is the measure of KJ. So let us try another example. Let us dig D4. Number 1. Let us solve for the value of X. So if you notice, QR here is the midline, and YW is the third side. So for our solution, it, it means that the measure of our midline, 2X minus 3, is equal to the half measure of the third side, X plus 9. So we have here this equation, 2X minus 3 is equal to 1 half X plus 9. Applying the multiplication property, let us multiply both sides by 2 to isolate x plus 9 here or to remove the fraction here. Therefore, we have this one. 2 times quantity 2x minus 3 is equal to x plus 9. By distributive property, we have here 4x minus 6 is equal to x plus 9. Let us use addition property or simply transpose negative 6 to the right side and x to the left side. Therefore, we have 4x minus x is equal to 9 plus 6. And this one is equal to 3x, which is equal to 15. So let us use division property or simply divide both sides by 3 to isolate x here. Therefore, the value of x is equal to 5. And that is the answer. Let us have example number 2. So again, we have here the midline and the third side. Therefore, our equation will be x plus b from our midline is equal to 1 half of 3x minus 
8. Multiply both sides by 2 to remove 1 half here. Therefore, we have 2 times quantity x plus 2 is equal to 3x minus 8. By distributive property, we have 2x plus 4 is equal to 3x minus 8. By addition property, or simply transpose 4 and 3x here, therefore we have 2x minus 3x is equal to negative 8 minus 4. Therefore, this one is equal to negative x is equal to negative 12. If you notice, our x here is in negative form. Let us multiply both sides by negative to make x here positive. Therefore, the value of x is equal to 12. And that is the answer. Let us have our last example. Again, we have here the measure of our midline and the measure of the third side. Therefore, for our solution, our equation will be x plus 19 is equal to 1 half of x plus 29. Multiply both sides by 2. Therefore, we have 2 times quantity x plus 19 is equal to x plus 29. By distributive property, we have 2x plus 38 is equal to x plus 29. Applying addition property of equality, therefore we have 2x minus x is equal to 29 minus 38. Evaluating this one, then we will obtain x which is equal to negative 9. And that is the answer. So that is how we prove midline theorem inductively and deductively and how we will use that midline theorem in solving some problems and that's the end of our tutorial thank you for watching see you again in my next video bye